Gecko Linux is one that was requested quite a while ago, but when I tested it, it was pretty outdated and the updates didn't play well with it. Fast forward to just a couple weeks ago and suddenly there's a new release. Now, an interesting thing about Gecko Linux is that it's based on OpenSUSE and it has a version called Plasma Next, which I sort of see as the OpenSUSE version of KDE Neon. But is it any good? Well, starting with the install, it uses an OpenSUSE looking bootloader, but Calamares instead of Yast for the actual install. I already see an issue. What's up with the styling? Where is that orange coming from? Anyway, the installer isn't anything special, so let's just dive over to the desktop and check out the terminal stuff. Now, fresh install comes in at 4.5 gigabytes, and the memory usage for this KDE desktop is a hair over 500 megabytes. It's like these desktops just keep getting lighter and lighter. And in NeoFetch, it tells us that this is OpenSUSE Leap 15.2, so it's obviously based on Leap, but for some reason it doesn't tell us what the Plasma version is. And notice that it's using Numix GTK3. So this is KDE Plasma 5.19.3, a somewhat recent version, but not the latest. And while we're here, you can see that I'm using my AMD R7 370 that I recently acquired, and we'll be using this card until the end of DistroDelves. So let's talk a little bit about the theme and the desktop. It's a fairly traditional KDE desktop, but the theme is like a weird breeze Numix hybrid, but without something like Cavantum helping glue things together and make it look native and normal. The result is a somewhat shaky theme where one change might just break everything and it's difficult to put it all back together. I'm not actually sure what the point of this theme is anyways because KDE Breeze's native color is like a blue and judging from the old background, Gecko's color is like green. So I don't know why they decided to add orange or red into the mix. I mean, everything clashed to begin with, so what's another color? And by the way, if you were thinking that the font looked weird, that's because it is weird. It's Ubuntu and Ubuntu Monospace, and those aren't bad fonts, but on KDE, it looks a little interesting. Anyway, yeah, pretty traditional KDE Plasma desktop. The layout is something you've probably seen before, and there's not really much special happening, except for maybe the clock and calendar widget shows the full verbose date. My phone connected without troubles and almost immediately started playing my music back. That's such a cool feature. It also detected my phone as a microphone, I don't think I've seen that before, and it detected that it supports tethering over Bluetooth. It was ready to connect to my phone's internet and everything. I've never seen this level of integration before. I don't know if it's a gecko thing or if that's just something KDE does and I've never seen it before. Either way, it's awesome. Gecko uses Yast for system management, and we've talked about it in the episodes about OpenSUSE, so I'm not going to cover it much here. I'll just run some updates and think it's kind of weird that it's including drivers for ATI Mach 64 and Rage 128. Okay. And the way of applications, there's not really much to say. It's a pretty lightweight distro, all things considered, and it does include some oddities like SAX 3. I'm not even sure what that is and the old Q4 configuration tool. It uses the built-in KDE printer setter upper, but despite having the HP drivers pre-installed, it did not detect my printer on the network, and it also needed root to open. And before you ask about the firewall, Gecko Linux doesn't appear to enable or even pre-install a firewall the way OpenSUSE does, so it ain't that. And sharing in general was a little weird. I thought that Samba didn't work, but after I recorded this segment, I left Dolphin open on the Samba shares like area, and then only two computers showed up. I have like five or six on my network, so I don't know where those are, but I mean, at least it worked, kind of. Nageko ships with EXFAT support, so I was able to access my USB thumb drive without issues. What I didn't have is 7-zip support. Yeah, I could open and extract the RAR file, but I couldn't even open the 7-zip file. Now you can obviously enable support for that through the repos or install the package or whatever, but it's very odd for it not to support that out of the box. Gecko pre-installs all of the media codecs and every one of the audio and video files played back without any issues. And both of my app images open just fine, but Gecko doesn't seem to support flat packs or snaps out of the box, though again, you could probably install them from the repos. And even though OpenSUSE works with RPM files, if it's not packaged with OpenSUSE in mind, it's not going to work. Take for example Lightworks, which I can install with Zipper, but there are libs and packages it's not able to find, so even if I force the install, it doesn't launch anything. Mango HUD did that thing where it installed, but whenever I tried to launch a game with it, it just crashed. 
Now I'm fairly certain it's because if Mango HUD doesn't recognize the distro in question, it tries to infer the library paths and based on OpenSUSE, the libraries aren't where it expects, so it crashes. I enlarged the built-in Steam FPS counter so you can at least see something. This is Streets of Rage 4 and it ran flawlessly. Now, it's a pretty basic game, all things considered, but just like Bunsen Labs, many of the other games I have installed already just won't launch, so that's GTA V, Void Bastards, and even XCOM 2 this time. They just wouldn't launch. Cluster Truck did, and it ran pretty good. Seems like the only time the frame rate really dropped below 60 was when I died. And in this game, you die pretty often. And the last one we've got is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and I'm pretty sure it ran better here than any other run on DistroDelve so far. Now that's not really saying a whole lot because the frame rates here are still unacceptable for a card like this, but I'm pretty sure this is better than with the 750 Ti. So Gecko Linux, it feels like somebody else's desktop to be honest, and what I mean by that is this feels like someone just installed OpenSUSE Leap updated KDE, styled it, and then created an ISO image for it so you can install it on your own machine. Like it feels unique, but not in a good way. It feels like somebody else's machine. And I mean, the performance is good, the resource usage was good, but the styling and overall look and feel was just bad. I don't really see a point in using this over just installing OpenSUSE Leap and customizing it for me. I mean, if you're planning on using OpenSUSE, you probably already know a thing or two about Linux anyways, and if you're looking for a newbie desktop, I mean, there are way better options out there. So again, we're back to why is this distro even a thing? And maybe it's the developer's pet project or something, I don't know. But try it if you're curious, but in my opinion, just stick with upstream OpenSUSE.